at Rackspace, we get around and see what everybody's doing in the industry, including our competitors, our friends, and our partners. And today, VMware has announced a major new platform as a service called Cloud Foundry, and we're here to see that. Who are you? My name is Todd Nielsen. I'm co-president of the application platform group at uh, VMware, and uh, I'm excited to be here. Yeah, and we we last saw each other I don't know a decade ago it, when you were you know working at, at Microsoft. <laughs> absolutely, it's crazy. Yeah, it's amazing how time flies. So I was just at the announcements you guys had the VMware uh, Cloud Foundry announcement. What does this mean for the industry? So what we announced today is, is Cloud Foundry, and the, the value proposition from Cloud Foundry is it's the first real open paths or open platform as a service. And by open, we mean we're going to support multiple frameworks, be it Ruby, be it Java, be it uh, Node.js, whatever. Uh, we're going to support a whole set of services, as well as any cloud. And by any cloud, we're actually going to offer a hosted service ourselves. We're going to work with folks like um, Rackspace and allow you to offer Cloud Foundry as a service that you'll provide, uh, as well as there'll be a behind the firewall version that enterprises can run in their private cloud. And then we have something we call the micro cloud, which instantiates Cloud Foundry onto your laptop so developers can write code themselves and then they can push to whichever cloud option they choose. And that federated cloud approach is really an interesting thing we'll talk about in a little bit later. Um, it's open source, right? Yeah, and it's open source. Uh, I forgot to mention that. Yeah. And so it's open source. It means that uh, you guys can download and add your own um, personality, bits and bytes. Uh, uh, the, the framework and the environment is so extensible, so it's really easy to add additional services or framework support. And one of the things we said downstairs is we wanted to make sure that, thing, that Cloud Foundry would be um, relevant today and tomorrow. And since we don't know what the future is going to look like as, as technology continues to evolve, we wanted to make sure it was really extensible to support all the technologies coming. What license is it under? It's the Apache 2 license. So the same license that we use for the Spring uh, framework. And just like when we announced OpenStack, people were like, well, why are you giving this away? Well, why are you giving it away? <laughs> so we think that the industry is at an interesting pivot point, and the challenge today with the cloud is, as Paul Moritz said uh, downstairs, is it feels like the Hotel California. Yeah. You get into in one cloud, and then you get trapped, and you can't get out. Yeah. And if the industry is really going to let this paradigm take it to the next level, it's got to be open. It's got to provide the flexibility and freedom for developers and, comp and corporations to deploy where they want, when they want, and move things around as necessary. Yeah. So we felt that being disruptive and offering an open source um, aspect to our platform as a service would really put a stake in the ground to say, no, if this paradigm is going to win the day, it must be open. And does it hook into any of the other offerings that VMware is, you know, the, the virtual machines? It, does it force me to buy a VMware stack somewhere? A absolutely not. Okay. No, it works well with, um, with, I'm sure with, it does. with vSphere. <laughs> but um, in fact, we showed downstairs how uh, the RightScale folks have taken Cloud Foundry and actually deployed it on top of Amazon. Okay. Um, we, ha we today have 3,500 vCloud providers, and these are service providers that offer uh, infrastructure as a service offerings based on VMware technologies. Yeah. And clearly they'll be able to take Cloud Foundry and run that on their service, but it doesn't have to be tied to, to uh, v, you know, vSphere infrastructure. Yeah, it sounds like it really uh, competes with uh, Heroku, right? Uh, which Salesforce bought and only runs uh, Ruby on Rails, if I remember right. You guys offer Node.js and uh, all sorts of different frameworks where the other competitors don't. Is that is that right? Yeah, one of the things we heard over and over from developers is they openness was really important. Uh, one of the things I learned from the Spring folks is how they were transparent and open with the community. Uh, as you What's Spring, by the way, is it for people who sorry, don't know I'm what sorry. Spring is? Spring is uh, a framework for Java that uh, is open source and VMware acquired um, Spring Source in August of 2009. Yeah. 
And you mentioned that uh, I was at Microsoft. I was at Microsoft uh, back in the in the day uh, from 1988 to 2000, yeah. and went through sort of the the Windows paradigm, and, and I ran developer relations in, in that era. And the world's changed, and so we've really taken a lot of the the expertise and skills that the Spring Source community has learned, and applied that to what we're doing with Cloud Foundry. And uh, in our outreach to uh, developers, we wanted to make sure we provided openness on all three aspects of, uh, of the Cloud Foundry value. What, what does that offer developers? Talk to the developers. What, why do I care that you offer so many, you know, so many sure. Uh, choices? Sure. So one of the things uh, that developers complain about today is if they're in a corporation, to actually get an application deployed requires all kinds of work to provision a server, provision a database, provision middleware, make sure it's all set up, how coordinate with the operations teams, and write IT tickets. And we had one uh, developer that was saying, it's like I spend all my time writing IT tickets. Yeah. And so the, the value prop for Cloud Foundry is, is we want to help you write code, not tickets. Yeah. And so, allowing you to focus on your application and then have, being able to push it to Cloud Foundry wherever it may reside, behind the firewall or in the public cloud, and let it automatically take care of the scaling and the management and those aspects, so you can focus on the application logic. Yeah. I, it doesn't yet support sh uh, Chef, if I remember right, right? The uh, fingerprinting technology. To correct, today it doesn't, but okay. uh, again, because it's open source, uh, the Chef folks can add it, or uh, um, it may be something we add, we add ourselves in the future. Interesting. Um, I saw a demo where you spun up a, th a hundred instances in like eight seconds. Talk about scalability and, and how that's built in. One of the things we built in the system is that it will definitely scale as you need. So, as you, you saw in the demo, you could have a system running, um, you know, and it, it because of load or because of, it, because of um, additional capacity constraints or, or what have you, it can scale quickly to 100 to 1,000 VMs and do it very, very quickly. What's the database infrastructure look like? I saw some demos with MySQL and I saw others with the no, great, no SQL. Yeah, great approach. question. Um, one of the interesting things that's happening in the industry right now is in the database world. There is all kinds of change and chaos and transformation. And so instead of just tying and saying, if you're going to use Cloud Foundry, you must use this database. We wanted that to be open. And so today on the site live, we've got um, MongoDB, we have MySQL, um, and you'll see us over um, you know, the coming months add support for Gemfire, for um, CouchDB, for other type of um, uh, offerings that, that we'll add and other people will add as well. You're offering your own hosting. Yeah. How does that compare to the uh, Rackspace Cloud, Amazon Clouds, the, uh, and all the others, the Azures at Microsoft? And, uh, Great question. So, um, we, historically VMware has said, you know, we're going to just be a, a supplier of arms to the various service providers out there. And as I mentioned, we have 3,500 vCloud partners that are hosting an infrastructure as a service offering uh, with our technologies. And one of the things we learned is it takes a different DNA to build software yep. versus run a service. Absolutely. And that epiphany made us say, okay, we need to get some of that DNA and that skills expertise so that we can more effectively understand and work with our service provider community and our, and our partners. And so last week we announced that we're, we've actually taken the employees from the EMC Mosey service, yep. and the employees now are VMware employees. Okay. So EMC retains the customers and, and the, they run the service and the revenue and everything. But the employees are now working for us and they're essentially outsourcing their services to EMC yeah. as well as then being available to run Cloud Foundry operations and, and, and those kinds of things. And so our focus for the, the hosted cloudfoundry.com site is really for developers. Yeah. It's a chance for them to kick the tires, try it out, um, experience it, see what it is. Is. And then when they want to deploy into production, they'll have an incredible number of choices of partners that they can choose, where do they want to deploy, where they might have a specific SLA they need, or they have a better relationship with, or however they want to choose to deploy it. So it you're, not really, you're not really trying to be the end we, uh, we're not know, saying not service providers get out of the way, it's all us. Uh -huh. What we're trying to say is we want to come one, come all, and then when you want to deploy your application, we're going to have a list of everyone we want you to deploy to. One of the things we hear from, from enterprises is they also want to have the ability to run it behind their own firewall. Okay. They want to have their private cloud option. And so it really provides the choice into the hands of 
either IT or the developers to determine where and how it's, um, it's deployed. Interesting, are you uh, building your own data centers then? I, actually, where we're, running, where we're running Cloud Foundry com right now is in the same data center that uh, Mosey is running in. Okay. And so uh, today, Mosey has 70 petabytes of data That's uh, that they manage, it's significant, okay. and a million users. So um, we've got you know, plenty of capacity there, they're in a great site, and, uh, uh, but we really don't want to get into the massive data center build out business, yeah. our, our preference would be to um, provide an entry point and then hand it to our, our partners like Rackspace. Interesting. Um, what else do uh, developers and sysadmin, well, just st stay on developers for a second. What, what else do they need to know about this? About this uh, um, it, it, you know, it's available today. Go check out cloudfoundry.com. Uh, in probably two, three weeks time, they'll be able to download a micro cloud to their own laptop and just start playing with themselves so they don't even have to have a connection to the cloud. And then when they want to deploy it, they can choose wherever they'd like to deploy it. And now talk to the uh, guys like at Rackspace who are uh, sysadmins and, and need to get these systems running on a data center. What do they need to know? Yeah, so the great thing from the sysadmins perspective, we talked about developers want to write code and not tickets. For the um, sysadmins and for uh, enterprise IT, they're trying to look uh, for the uh, tools that can help them provide um, a service to their constituents. So they're frustrated as well that the developers are saying, I'm not going to mess with you, I'm just going to give you a credit card and go to Amazon or go to Rackspace or go elsewhere. And so now the enterprise IT can say, look, we can provide a, the service or IT as a service capabilities you're looking for, yep. but do it under the, the guise of behind the firewall where it's governed and compliance and, and all the issues that, that enterprise has to care about. Mm -hmm. and, and the Rackspace, um, IT folks, it gives them a chance to now offer a platform as a service, um, which is uh, definitely an exciting space, uh, particularly in, in well, year absolutely. 2011. Absolutely, we're going to be looking at it heavily. Um, it's really nice having you guys on board with the open source world. So uh, Thanks. You know, I, one thing I should mention on that, we're, we're excited. We've been part of the open source world for a while. I mean, people don't necessarily think of VMware and open source, but when you think about Spring Source, Rabbit, Redis, our Zimbra offering, we have a number of open source offerings, and now with Cloud Foundry, um, you know, we, we, we believe we're, we're becoming a, um, a noteworthy um, member of the community. Yeah, well, we're excited about this because it lets us offer our customers some, some better platforms. Um, and we compete then on service. Absolutely, and, uh, no, absolutely. And at the end of the day, you know, um, the Gartner folks believe that uh, going forward, there's going to be tens and thousands of these um, cloud providers out there. Uh, and you know, there's a, an opinion that some folks have that oh, there will only be three cloud providers, and everybody else will get wiped away. But we believe that there really will be tens of thousands of these because each of you will offer a different set of services, or SLAs, or vertical specialization, or intimate relationships, and so it's an incredible opportunity opportunity for everyone in the service provider space as well as for customers as choice and openness is going to reign. Very cool. Where do we learn again about it? So cloudfoundry.com is the, we can find out about it as well as cloudfoundry.org is the uh, open source project site. Yeah, and it's on GitHub as it's well. It's on GitHub yeah. as well, correct. And uh, you guys are on Twitter. There's a new Twitter address if I remember yes. right, Cloud Foundry. Yes, there is. I think yep. it's a hashtag at, at Cloud Foundry. Or C, the hashtag was C Foundry. C Foundry. But the Twitter tag, was it C Foundry or Cloud Foundry? Uh, we'll look it up and put it in the show yeah, notes. Okay. And are you on Twitter as well? I'm not. You're not? I know, I need, I need, we, I need, I need you're to do not that. Allowed I'm, I'm kind of old school, I need, to, I, need to, <laughs> I need to make that happen. Not allowed to stay in Silicon Valley if you're yeah, not on Twitter. <laughs> exactly right. Well, thank, thank you so much. Yes, thanks so much, Robert. We'll Congrats. Thank you.